Hey friends, thanks for tuning in. We are in Paraguay, South America. I'd like to inform you a little bit about Paraguay. A lot of information, so I hope you stay tuned. Paraguay, lots of history and a lot of interesting stuff, especially the Terere. For today's video, I have a special guest, my brother-in-law, who's gonna do most of the talking, who knows more of Paraguay's history and geographics, since he is a history teacher. Without further ado, come on. Excuse me, where? Where should I look? There, there. Oh, there you are. So Welcome. I, thank you, hi, it's an honor to participate in Wolf's World uh, video. So Paraguay was conquered in the 16th century by the Spaniards. You all know the history about them conquering America. Uh, basically, geographically seen, Paraguay is uh, divided in two great areas. One is the eastern part of Paraguay, where we have a subtropic uh, climate. And then we have here the Chaco, where it is semi-arid. It's actually very similar to Australia. And specifically, the Chaco is actually often compared to the outback in Australia. And you will not believe it because you see in the background a lot of water. But the truth is, uh, here are a lot of salt lagoons. What does that mean? Does that mean they're just full of salt? It means that periodically they, are, they have water that has a lot of salt in it. But then periodically again, they become nice waters where fish and crocodiles and so on are like we have here. So where is this place in the Chaco? We are actually in one of the places where the Tropic of the Capricorn crosses. People have done experiments here putting in posts and so on and observating the shadow at 12 noon and they say there is at this time of the year in the high season of summer there's no shadow we actually are on the almost exact point of the the tropic of the capricorn this is a nature reserve in paraguay there are a lot of nature reserves but the most of them are in the chaco because it's actually ideal for it we have a lot of uh, wildlife here you have crocodiles, you have wild hogs, you have... Uh, I could go on and on. This place is actually 200 hectares big. It's actually untouched. You have a lot of indigenous population here. And they were the first here. But because the Chaco is so big, you also have a lot of places where they actually never really lived. So now you guys will ask yourself, why am I here? Uh, why I don't look like an uh, aboriginal or a Latino? Uh, that's because in 1927, a group of uh, Canadian immigrants, what actually have European roots from Germany and Holland, came here because of uh, beliefs. They actually left Canada because of the school system, because they wanted them to teach English in their schools. And they were pretty stubborn and they said, no, German and religion, you cannot divide them. So if English comes into our schools, we will have to forever leave our beliefs and so on. So they came here and they promised them a wonderful land. They came here in May. Sometimes in May we have foggy weather where it's actually a little bit cold. And they planted wheat and it grew perfectly. But that was just because it was that time of the year. When once they came they noticed uh, wheat does not grow in the Chaco. The Chaco is uh, a land where you actually only can do cattle ranching and so on. Yeah? So in the first time, actually, they, it was a fight to survive. It really was a fight to survive. Uh, and I don't, don't know if I mentioned, I'm talking about a Protestant group, uh, Mennonites specifically. And now we are here actually exactly 90 years ago that was, because now we're in the year 2017 and we are still standing strong and we've tried to make a living here. It's unbelievable how peacefully we in all these years have lived with the uh, Aboriginal people and the Latinos and so on and those three cultures actually Mennonite German we could say cultural background and Latino and Aborigines actually always lived and live here together and so God will still will another 90 years and more okay what is Terere it's a traditional beverage in Paraguay. Uh, in the beginning, it was it always had to be a bullhorn, and then this this is a straw, actually a bombilla, what filters the water. The weed in here, you see, is uh, in the whole world. It is called uh, yerba mate. You can find it actually in all around the world. Why is it called yerba mate? Yerba mate is the hot beverage that you drink with the same weed. 
you you boil the water to a point where it's actually going to boil but it's not boiling yet so then you take it off the fire and you drink it like that that's how you drink mate mate is known in argentina in uruguay and in brazil it's actually more popular than terere terere is something uniquely paraguayan where you do the same thing but instead of uh, boiling the water you just take cold water and the most of the Paraguayans like to put a lot of ice in it so that it's nice and cold because in Paraguay it's very hot. It gets, gets up to, here in the Chaco sometimes, up to 45 degrees uh, Celsius. So then they drink it with a lot of ice and nice and cool and you drink it the whole day long. And it's very healthy for your um, digestion and it's good for, your, uh, for hydration in general. It has a very little dose of, uh, of caffeine in it, so it actually also keeps you awake if you drink it in uh, big amounts. What is the history of it? Actually, the, the legend says that the aborigines already used it, and then they say that the Spaniards then when they came, they found out that it was actually a good drink. They only drank it in mate, so instead of coffee they drank that because to get coffee from uh, Spain could be very difficult in those times and uh, quickly they adapted to that in Argentina and in Uruguay you will only see people drinking mate actually no terere terere is unique only in Par Paraguay why? I'll just tell you the theory that I know the most there are different theories one is in the Chaco war between Bolivia and Paraguay the soldiers when they were uh, sitting like for example far away from their from the fort or far away from the front they wanted to drink mate but the official the, the officer said no you're not allowed to drink mate because the the smoke will show the Bolivians where we are so they thought themselves no they cannot prohibit us to drink that so they just drank it cold with cold water and that's what people say where terere comes from some people say yeah so that would be then something uniquely Paraguayan yeah there is actually also a Dia del Terere, that would be like a national day where they uh, commemorate Terere. Dia del Terere, that means the day of Terere.